हेलो यूट्यूब व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू माई शो फ्यूचर फ्राइडे एपिसोड नंबर फोर टुडे वी कैन टेक अ लुक इन टू हेल और कलोकली नोन एज वीनस सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो वॉट इज इट इट्स अ प्लानट सेम लाइक अर्थ मार्स एंड मर्करी एंड इट्स अ टेरेस्ट्रियल प्लानट बेसिकली इट हैज स्टोन कोर बेसिकली इट्स नॉट अ गैस जैंड इट हैज अ सर्फेस इट्स बेस्ड ऑन स्टोन एंड इट्स अ सेकेंड size planet as in like uh, mercury venus earth mars so mercury is at the second ranking from sun mercury venus earth mars now it spins backwards and uh, it's little smaller than earth and i will dive into it why that is such a good thing and it can be seen as uh, with naked eye and you must have heard morning star evening star that's this venus yes the, that's a planet you can see it quite easily and you can download mobile apps to uh, aid your dis- discovery of this morning star so what's it like there well day is longer than year what does that mean one day can go longer than a year actually it takes so it spins so slowly that its day literally does not is over until one orbit is finished so suffice to say instead of 24 hours it has like around 5000 to 8000 hours or something like that so days longer and it's actual hell so imagine lead a metal that metal uh, that you have in lead acid battery and other things imagine melting that that would be the surface temperature of venus now the magical part that's why i have highlighted this it has 90% of earth surface gravity so if you stand there of course in a chamber where you can stand up it will feel almost like earth like uh, unless somebody told you that uh, you know you are on another planet you won't be able to tell it because the gravity is almost same on mars you will easily know that uh, the gravity is way too low but on venus it's almost the same it has a lot of sulfur in it basically sulfur dioxide in cloud so basically you have to have acid resi- residue thing otherwise uh, you're going to be corroded away so it is actual hell and all this thing might be manageable but it also has an atmosphere that's 90 time of earth what does that mean basically if you send probe down there it will be crushed by the atmosphere itself like how you can uh, send some like a ball or something like in deep ocean it gets crushed by the uh, water pressure it has same it has 90 time the atmospheric pressure so earth can be classified as one bar at sea level this puppy has 90 bar however all those things can be solved but this does have the magical part that it has 90% of earth surface gravity so let's uh, understand why it's so important so if it is like a hell then why it's so important to humanity well the question came to mind people once we send the first probes to uh, this was the first planet that our probes went to and uh, we found it something odd in it that mercury venus earth mercury should be hottest and it is like its day side is at as hot as like you know roughly 350 to 400 degrees celsius however because it does not have an atmosphere the night side is which is almost absolute zero okay cool makes sense however venus it's uh, 400 degrees which is already higher and it does not have a night side how the heck a planet that is further than the source of energy is hotter than what is closer to it that's what taught us about runaway greenhouse effect this is why humanity knows of greenhouse effect we did not learn about greenhouse effect on earth it's learned from venus suffice to say it's quite important and this is a very basic representation of uh, greenhouse effect all you have to understand is that um, earth absorbs energy and ejects that energy nothing fancy about it it's like uh, how you heat up a glass of water it cools down as simple as that sun is the heater and uh, on the night side it cools it gives off the energy now tricky part is that co2 reflects infrared not all spectrum not all wavelengths but infrared specifically certain range it reflects it back now it acts as a like a mirror where like uh, earth earth got bombarded by high energy radiation earth got hot it's like okay at the cooling time it's releasing that energy but it's not releasing in the same frequency it's not like you know releasing ultraviolet it's releasing infrared it's like you know the heat that we feel it's trying to cool itself however the co2 in the atmosphere that we have added it's uh, reflecting it back so it's acting like a blanket 
However, this blanket is not two way, it's one way. That's the biggest problem with it. It's not that uh, on the sun side, it's not gonna work. Sun's light won't be reflected off of it. It will still come inside, but it will get trapped. That's how Venus got so hot. That is the biggest problem with uh, greenhouse power. It can lead to a runaway. And once it runs away, your yeah, planet is dead. So we'll, Earth has the potential to turn into Venus. Although our temperature might not reach 400 degrees Celsius, I mean like approximately to sun does play a role, but 150 degrees Celsius is quite achievable. And suffice to say, you really don't want that. Venus is the reason we know of this. So the importance of Venus is cannot be understated. Now then question comes to mind why I am so excited about it. The good. Now we learned it's hell and all that. So what's the good about it? It's actually terraformable. In the episode of, on Mars, I specified Mars cannot be terraformed with any current technology. This however, this is an artist rendition of Venus, how it could look. Of course, it's an emotional artistic rendition, but it is feasible to do that. All you need is mirror. Now, you have to understand, in a two-body system, basically, where there is a star and planet, we have what's called Lagrange points. Basically, if you put a spacecraft there, it has to spend very little fuel to, you know, keep itself steady there. Now, basically, we have to put a sunshade, basically mirrors, at Lagrange one point. Now, of course, you are trying to shade a planet. It's not going to be, you know, small mirrors. It's going to be hundreds of kilometers large. Now, it won't be one large mirror. You can't build that you will have hundreds of small ones. And we have done testing on this sort of thing. We also call them solar sail. So we know it's feasible. And the only way to do it on a planetary scale would be if we colonize moon. And I have already made an episode on that. So it is terraformable with only mirrors. So you put a mirror here, it cools the planet down. However, it does take time. This is not something we put a mirror tomorrow, the temperature will go down. It will take time, 200 years of time. Now you're like, whoa, that's too long. Yes and no. Yes, it's too long. No, it's too not too long because that's few generations. That's not like, you know, hundreds and thousands of generations. That's just, there are homes that are old enough. There are temples that are older than that. Heck, Roman civilization lived 900 years continuously. So, suffice to say, it's not true. And what are you getting at the other end? This is the miracle part of it. You are getting Earth 2.0. So, let's say you blocked it. Now, you might ask a question. Okay, I have blocked it. Cool and all. It's cold now. But there is no sunlight. Now, we have to put mirrors in L4 and L5. What they will do? They will bounce the light into one uh, sphere. It Generally, it, ideal material for this would be tungsten. And tungsten will start to glow. And we can make the tungsten ball basically a satellite. We are just making an artificial satellite, which uses mirror here and here to reflect sunlight to that uh, ball. And we'll get a day-night cycle. That's how we can bypass this uh, you know, a day is longer than a year problem. So suffice to say with mirrors only, no magical technology with mirrors only, provided that we can mass manufacture them on moon, we got this for uh, 200 years, we can get it. Now it has short travel time, which is very crucial. If you want economic uh, up and down between two planets, Mars takes minimum of 260 years. And the first probe that we sent took only 110 years, 110 days, pardon me. So suffice to say, short travel time, it also means communication is much more faster. You don't, instead of waiting for 20 minutes of lag, you only had 10 minutes of lag, or sometimes even lower than that. So it does play a very crucial role, especially in economics. So, and to make it Earth 2.0, like let's say you got the planet cooled down. Let's say what will happen to the carbon dioxide that is in the atmosphere? Well, it will either become solid or it will become liquid. Because the uh, once you phase change a material, once it gives off the energy, it cannot change back without you putting in the energy. So once we have shielded it, because there is so much pressure in the atmosphere, while it's cooling, it will turn into liquid. It won't evaporate again because there is no energy source to do so. Uh, or if it keeps cooling it down, we can like, you know, permanently block the sun and we are like, you know, keep it cooling down, cooling down. It will turn into solid when we'll have dry ice uh, lakes, basically. But you really don't want to swim in that because, you know, you're going to have die from frostbite and it's a solid. And you might say, okay, but we are reflecting sunlight to it. But mirrors only reflect a very, very tiny fraction of the electromagnetic spectrum. And if you are not reflecting infrared, you are not getting the heat. You are not reflecting microwave, you are not getting that heat. So basically, we are filtering out the entire electromagnetic spectrum. So we are getting the light, the visual light. 
however we are not getting the heat of the sun of course the sunshade won't be 100% perfect it won't be like you know stopping it so that i assume will give us uh, you know our seasons like you know when day and night cycle will change when you come towards the sunshade side it will be a bit hotter so it is quite per now to make it to point all you did, all you did is cooled it down added it a fake sun now but it still does not have an atmosphere that is suitable for us we have to add hydrogen to it now this is the tricky part this is the part which will take a lot of energy and time we have to go to any moon of the jupiter where generally they have hydrocarbon use a nuclear reactor there yeah solar power does not work that far out and uh, create lot of liquid hydrogen now the reason why we want to do that without it can we do yeah we can do that it's just you want to make sure that co2 does not remain in co2 phase because that's a ticking time bomb we release the uh, carbon in the atmosphere and carbon got burnt with uh, oxygen and we have greenhouse effect so in venus we have to make sure that possibility cannot happen so you have to turn hydrocarbon uh, pardon me carbon dioxide into hydrocarbon basically we have to pile it up with uh, other carbon that way we can make into coal and what will you do with the free oxygen we will make into water vapor so it cannot catch fire again that way we can permanently lock the co2 problem so as you see with uh, all the things that we can do with current technology venus has the actual potential to become earth 2.0 and it will hold atmosphere it has a atmosphere changing atmosphere is much easier than giving a atmosphere this is much better candidate for humans than mars is its only side effect we have to put the 2 300 years of effort first so will it happen i do not know however mars has trying also you can build flying city there if you want to go today so that's also there so that was my presentation hope you liked it thank you for watching and if you learned from it or liked it please like if you didn't like it, please dislike leave a comment and subscribe and if you are free press the bell icon i upload video every day so Please do so. Thanks for watching.